for tonight. And then we're going to see a modern day miracle as Gabby is coming to be baptized. As you're going to Matthew 9, I got a quote for you. By C.S. Lewis. He says, If demons exist, their first aim is to give you an anesthetic. To put you off your guard. Only if that fails, do you become aware of them. Now, is our chance to choose the right side. God is holding back to give us that chance. It won't last forever. We must take it or leave it. See, tonight, you can't not just a room where we're going to praise God. We can to a room to praise God and to scheme... Because the devil is scheming right now. He has his own dark forces called demons. Like it or not, they do exist. And what's the objective for a demon? To lead you away from God. The title of the lesson for you tonight is A War Against Demons. A War Against Demons. See, this was a topic where I'm like, I didn't really know much about this topic, so I had to dive into the Bible to really study it out. Are demons a real thing? Yeah. Well, let's see what Jesus did while he was here on earth. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Let's look at verse 32. Give me an amen when you're there. Because you got to understand, in Revelation 12, there was a fight of all fights. Michael, the archangel, fought against the devil, or Satan, which means accuser, and he lost that war. And he was sent down to earth, also with his fallen angels, which are demons or impure spirits. Well, why do you think God allowed them to come here? To show Satan he's going to lose again. We are those in this room that are going to win the second battle. But it takes understanding that you are at war. Because if you know you're not at war right now, just maybe you're demon-possessed tonight. Let's look at Jesus in Matthew 9, verse 32. This would be a fun study. Verse 32, let's see what Jesus did when he was here. It says, while they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was, about, was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. You know, you never hear the saying, haters going hate. That's what they're doing right now. They're hating Jesus for driving out demons. Curing people. That's what he did. Yeah. Isn't that what happened to you when you studied the Bible? Yeah. All those demons flee. And you're a clear-minded, pure-hearted, good conscience, a sincere faith. That is what a human being is supposed to look like. But Satan and his demons are trying to distort and kill mankind. Right now, we're at a war of words. Because if you understand it, what did this demon do to this man? Caused him where he couldn't speak. How did God create the world? Let there be light. See, when you're creating God's image, you can do God-like things. But it requires you speaking the same very words that Jesus himself spoke. That's why we're studying the Bible here tonight. Satan does not want you to use your mouth. He just wants you to shut up. And as a Thrive Campus ministry, are you guys going to be quiet? No. Just like Trevor said, or are we going to be loud? No. We got a decision here tonight. If you're visiting, you have been selected by God. There's no coincidence that you're here. Now, hearing that D came all the way from Santa Cruz, that wasn't a coincidence. There's something in him that says, I need to go to this meeting. I need to see and I need to hear the very words of God. Yeah. But we understand as disciples, we can't just see or hear. 
We got to be doers. And I appreciate our boy Kevin praying and then there this, morning, this evening. Because Christianity is an action sport. There's no spectators in Christianity. We're either doing the game or we're watching it pass us by. I got two points for us tonight on how we're going to win the battle against demons. Well, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. You know, for those who are busy, I've been uh, having my personal time with God where I read the Bible every day, and I've been going through the book of Timothy. And I realized, what is Paul's objective to Timothy? Timothy was a young man about your guys' age. And he was leading a church, going through some hard trials. During his time, many Christians were getting killed for their faith. Could you imagine being a Christian in the first century? And if you said, Jesus, Lord, you get your head chopped off. Or you said, Jesus, Lord, you'd be crucified and be lit on fire. It'd be someone's light to the party. Wow. Or maybe, you know, you, you really believe in Jesus. The emperor would take you, throw in the arena, throw cow's blood on you, and the lions and dogs rip you apart. Do you still want to be a Christian here tonight? Because if it happened to them, don't you think history repeats itself? We're living the last days, aren't we? Well, how about we look at the scriptures and verify that? 1 Timothy 4, point number one. If we're going to win the war against demons, we have to fight against demonic activity. Fight against demonic activity. 1 Timothy 4, let's look at verse 1. The Bible says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. What in the world? Well, where, where, how, where do these demons work through? Let's keep reading. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. So what does demonic activity look like? It's actually found in church nowadays. Isn't that crazy? See, the, the people would think, you know, he's going to go after, you know, the sex, the drugs, rock and roll. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to use a church. Because we understand through the Bible, the church is the body of Christ. If Satan can go in the church and bring his forces and start creating some counterfeit churches, he's got you. If he can get you to feel like you're saved, then he's already won. But what did you catch? What are these preachers going to sound like? Hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared with a hot iron. What does that mean? The word that stood out to me when I was reading this was conscience. We all have a conscience here tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah. What was a conscience? A conscience is an inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. Whoa. Right? We all have that. When we're little kids, mom says, don't, don't do that. But then when you disobey mom, you feel guilty. Right. And then if she caught you, you're, you know, you're in trouble. You're never going to forget when she punishes you, grounds you, right? Or gets the belt, amen? Some, some people, maybe the, the sandal. I don't know, maybe off the latest, right? Um, but, but what you learn, though, is demons are preaching through false preachers. Says their conscience are seared. What that means is, it's easy for a demon to use you if you don't have a conscience. Wow. Meaning is, you're no longer guilty for the wrong that you do. Remember when you did something wrong, you felt guilty about it. Wow. But you do that wrong continuously, your conscience is no longer there. You're no longer feeling guilty anymore. So, God, so Satan and the demon is looking, where can I find a quote-unquote Christian and use that person as my chosen vessel? My chosen instrument to preach false doctrine through them. Because wow, Christianity has been turned to motivational speaking. Mm. And they can just make you feel good. You come back next Sunday, put your money in the play, and you keep coming back. It's like a spiritual high. Like a dopamine. Oh, I feel good. I'm going to come back. Nowadays, church, uh, church leaders or you know, pastors, they don't talk about sin or hell anymore. Because they don't want to, they don't want to frighten anybody. Because they're afraid of them leaving. 
But isn't that, that's the problem, isn't it? Because they're probably not living it out themselves. We understand something. We're at a, we're at a war right now. Demonic possessions everywhere. The activities everywhere. It's even on our campuses right now. Yeah. Like right now, we could have done anything else with our time. Yeah. We could have went to a party and I wake up the next morning. Wow. There's so much going on on this campus that needs a revolution. It starts with the campus. You guys are the future leaders. When Jesus went and started his ministry when he was 30 years young, I think people forget that Jesus was only 30. And he found college students. People that had the willingness to go anywhere, do anything, or give up everything. Yeah. Because they understood this life is short. James yeah. talks about this life is just a mist. Yeah. You're here today, gone tomorrow. What was your life all about? How will you be remembered? It's not if you'll be remembered. How will you be remembered? Will you find your name in the book of life? Or is this going to be a big old race mark? Do you win the battle against demons? Mm -hmm. But it starts off by fighting against demonic activity. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like even in a more context? Let's go to 2 Timothy. You guys like uh, watching movies? Yeah. I'm a big movie buff. You know, there's a lot of, like, a lot of people like action or comedy, um, anime, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I hit the, hit the right genre. But anybody like uh, scary movies? Yeah. You know, sadly, sadly, in our society, demonic activity has been Hollywoodized. What does that look like? You turn on the movie, you see the exorcism, right? You just see, you get like spooked for a little bit. And they make demon possession look very scary and like, oh my gosh, I would never, I don't want to be away from that. That's not actually biblical, though. Oh, come on, bro. De true demon possession? We're going to look at it right here. Because think about it. What was God's plan? For everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. But where's God? He's in heaven. He already came down and just showed us the way. Well, what do we got to do? We got to follow that way. He was the way, the truth, and the life. Don't you also got to look like that, too? Is that what a Christian is? A little Christ? Do you look more and more like Jesus today? than you were yesterday. That's the ambition for a Christian. Or are you demon-possessed tonight? And I'm probably like, well, bro, I'm not, my head's not spinning around. I'm not foaming at the mouth. That's true. But remember, God works through you to go help somebody else come to him. So what do you think Satan's purpose is? He takes his demons, he brings them to the side, like, hey, guys, all right, who can we scout out right now? You know, Chase is over there. You know what? It's, you know this. You know what we should do? And they start scheming, start planning, start plotting. How can they take Chase out? How can they drag Chase to hell? Do you think they're going to try to come at him and scare him? No. So what do you think their play is? Let's look at it right here in 2 Timothy 3. Let's look at verse 1. Fight against demonic activity. And we'll look at what demon possession at its finest looks like. Verse 1 it says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. Amen. What is their plan to take a soul to hell? To get them to bite into sin. Wow. Right here we find a list of sins that the demons are plotting to get you to bite into. Because if you do enough sins, what's that do to your conscience? You're going to sear it 
And you're going to find yourself, oh, I'm okay. You're going to buy it. And then you're going to buy into a false doctrine. Once saved, always saved. Right? But I can live however I want. I can't lose my salvation. But the Bible just says have nothing to do with these people. You think those people are going to be in heaven? No. They're sadly deceived. But who's the master at deceiving people? Satan. But here's the thing. People get this confused. I'm like, I feel like I'm being tempted by Satan. No, you're not. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at once like God. But Satan does have a walkie-talkie. Oh. So you see Alex right there? You better go after Alex after Devo. Oh. Because this man is going to change the world. We got to take him out right now. Gabby is getting baptized tonight. How can we psych her out right now? How can we get her to fear getting right with God? Fear the future. That's what they're doing. That's what he's doing right now. You probably ask that. She probably feel a lot. Because demonic activity is trying to stop her from going into the light. There's demonic activity all around us. We can go through this list. But what's the main thing that you see? These people that are demon possessed says they have a form of godliness. They actually look very nice people. But inwardly, they're not living for God. Wow. They're hypocrites. Mm. Yeah. That's my biggest fear. Yeah. Is one day I see guys like, dude, you never really did my will. Wow. You were demon possessed the whole time. You weren't a vessel for me. You're a vessel for Satan. Yeah. But again, there's demon possession, demonic activity all around us. But what do they have you use? Sin. Just replace demon with sin. That's what they feed you. So check your life right now. Do you see this in your life? If so, you are demon-possessed. You're allowing demons to attack you and still kill and destroy your faith. You know why we see so much demonic activity? Or why we look at the world the way it is? Demonic activity. Even right now, school shootings are at all-time high. Why? Demonic activity. What's preventing somebody coming in here and shooting? Because God is also a loving God, he will protect his children. Why are there so many wars going on? Innocent people getting killed. Demonic activity. Why is the divorce rate so high? Why is broken homes so high? Demonic activity. Why are there so much DUIs? Even, though, even today, I was driving back from San Mateo. I look on the left side of the 101, there's two cars flipped. I don't know if they were even survived. I'm not saying the DUI, but man, there's so much chaos going on. Yeah. You ever get off work and you're just like, you're just frustrated, you just want to go home to sleep? And there's so much traffic, and then you just make one wrong turn. That could be your life. Wow. How many people have gone to jail because of stupid decisions that, made, that happened like in five minutes? You just had a thought, you didn't have self control, and you turn the wheel and you hit somebody. What do you think, what do you think caused you to do that? Demonic activity. How many overdoses do we got to see? How many more suicides do we got to see? Because when someone is truly possessed and there's true demonic activity, it only ends in tragedy. And that's honestly the reason why I studied the Bible. I went through so much tragedy in my life. I've lost friends to drugs. I've lost gran I lost my grandpa to health. I've lost many different friends. And I was like, man, what's the meaning of life? Come on, bro. The real meaning is to know God. Yeah. To have a true relationship with him, yeah. to honor him, and yeah. to praise him, but to also fight back against the demons out there. Yeah. The goal for a demon is simple. They're trying to take you on out. Yeah. So if you don't learn how to fight them back, what chance do you have tonight? Mm. Are you fighting off the demonic activity? On, if you don't know how to fight back, how do you know if you're not the one being controlled right now? Wow. 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 What is your life truly consisted of right now? How many likes do you on Facebook? Your, your career? Your grades? Your status? What, what is it? What is your life consisted of? What do you find most value in? Or is it simply just, I just love being God with God. I love being around disciples. I love sharing my faith. I love reading the Bible. I love praying. Is that where you find your joy? If not, you're most likely being used by a demon. 
to bring Satan glory. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the opposite. Do you know there's actually a satanic Bible? Oh. Yeah. It basically goes again. It kind of takes this and kind of like distorts it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying to read it, you know. Because, <laughs> you know, the Bible gives you faith in God. That'll probably give you faith in the devil. But we understand the devil's real. The greatest lie he'll ever say is like, I don't exist. But he is everywhere. But he's working through his team. He has his own leaders. How to take a soul to hell. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to fight back, how you know if you're the one being controlled? Who are you obeying lately? Who are you obeying lately? Let's look at how you actually fight back. You ready? You guys want to win the battle against demons? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Well, we kind of have an idea on how to fight back. Well, we understand the demon's job is to get you to sear your conscience. So now you're totally wide open. You're a number one draft pick now to do what Satan wants you to do. So what do you think we got to do to fight back against the mind forces? We got to protect our mind. The greatest war is between your ears. This is how you fight back. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at verse 4. Verse 4. It says, It says, The weapons, and my eyes are going out. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. All right. So how do you fight back? How do you fight so you don't have a seared conscience? Well, the Bible says we don't fight like the world fights. Like when someone wrongs you, our human nature wants to fight back. Yeah. But the Bible says you love your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like that, then guess what? You're disobeying God. Yeah. Your conscience will get seared if you would pay evil for evil. Yeah. God says leave room for God's wrath. Yeah. If your enemy is mocking you, give them something to eat. Come on, give them something to drink. On, By doing so, you're pouring hot coals on their heads. Yeah. Leave room for God's wrath. But how do we get there? You got to put Bible in your mind. You got to put Bible in your heart. So when you're tempted by a demon, you can use the very word of God to refute what they're trying to get you to get into. We've already looked at the sins. Pornography, sex before marriage, drugs, alcohol. Let's just name the sins that campus students want to get into right now. Is there anything more than that? Sex? Drinking and drugs. That's basically it. Or selfish ambition, just try to get all this money, but we know money. Is that really going to cure your loneliness? It'll keep you busy a while. But those are the things that will take you to hell. So when Satan, through a demon, wants to tempt you with those things, you just pick up your word. What does it say about sexual immorality? What does the Bible say about sex before marriage? It's a sin. Oh, okay, cool. I don't think I'd be tempted by that anymore. What is it about impurity, laziness, pride, wow. self-righteousness? Wow. How are you going to tell me you're saved, but you don't know the Bible? Yeah. Talk about it. You know the number one sin Jesus hates the most is self-righteous people. Yeah. If you can't back up your beliefs with the Bible, you may be the number one object that Satan's going to use to, to destroy the world. Wow. How many churches are out there? Where you got the, the priest up there telling people what they want to hear yeah. instead of what they need to hear. Yeah. You need to repent. We're all sinful. We live a lifestyle of repentance. The moment we stop, re- stop repenting, that's when the demon can really enter you True, and to destroy you. Come on. Come on, bro. See, they are very patient. You know that? They've been around for centuries. Wow. They're not someone that's going to be, they're not impatient. No, I'll, 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 I'll watch Kevin for a long time. Two years, three years, four years, five years. Is he going to persevere? Anna, is she going to persevere five, 10, 20 years? The demons are very patient, though. Because they already know they lost the war. 
There's no reason they're like, oh man. No, they're just like, I'll wait for them to slip up. They can't resist me forever. Oh. Wow. Are you going to withstand the test of time? Wow. How you do that is, do you know how to use the Bible to protect your conscience? Or are you obeying the Bible? Because that's what it's all about. You may know the Bible inside out, but if you're not obeying it. You're the number one vessel for Satan. And that's something that should scare you tonight. God actually wants you to fear him. Because when you actually fear him, what do you end up getting? True wisdom. If you don't fear God, you're not going to know God. You know God's sovereign? This is the same God that created sharks. Mm. Tornadoes. Mm. Mm. Like how many things that he created that freaks you on out? Anybody want to go dive in the deep ocean? No, no. no why? Because no. there's creatures in there that'll mess you on up. But you know who created them? God did. Yeah. That's nothing compared to God. Yeah. God wants you to learn how to fear him. Yeah. Well, what does fearing God do? Well, Exodus 20, 20 says, the fear of God keeps you from sinning. Wow. So if you're living a lifestyle of sin, you just don't fear him. Wow. And now you're not an instrument of God. You're an instrument of a demon. Yeah. See, Junior is, he's, you know, he's fired up right now. So he's like, he's like, I want to go preach the word. He's like, no, like we're going to win the battle against demonic activity. Satan wants to convince you to be physically strong, but weak minded. Have you focused more on your personality than your character? Mm. Or are you, I just want people to like me, but you're like, you're just so lazy. You lack ambition. You're complacent. But people like me, though. Yeah, Satan likes you, too. We got to be the most ambitious people. There's people on this campus. Oh, my goodness. The, the workload they put on to get a degree. Then get their the 40, 50, 60 hour work week. Man, they're ambitious. Are we ambitious to go seek and save the lost? Like, it's so awesome to see so many new faces that are coming and want to hear the word of God and pursue the relationship with God. This is exactly what we need. We're almost filling this room. Now, I've got to talk to Natalia, and we've got to get a bigger room now. It's like, man, this is a good problem to have. we got to learn how to fight back. If you're visiting tonight and you don't know how to use the Bible to protect your conscience, get with somebody. Really, humble yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't let your pride get in the way. I don't care if your daddy's a pastor. Uh. What about you? Like, when you, sit, when you see God face to face, but my dad was a pastor. Good for him. What about you? Was God truly your father? Don't let your daddy's faith, your daddy's faith ain't get you in heaven. You got to have your own faith. So if you're visiting tonight, it's not a coincidence. Humble yourself. I've never met a man or a woman that God cannot humble. Don't let God humble you. Humble yourself and learn how to fight the demonic activity. Amen? Let's close my second and final point. Once you learn how to fight, you have to also got to enlist into God's army. Because here's the thing. Christianity is not a lone wolf sport. You need a team. And it's awesome to see a lot of like athletes here. They understand teamwork makes a dream work. So this team right here makes Jesus' dream work. You know, enlist into God's army. Let's go to Luke 9. You gotta understand, when Jesus came from heaven to earth, he came to start his, uh, his ministry, but he knew it wasn't just gonna be him, though. It wasn't gonna just be him that's gonna get the work, the job done. He's like, all right, I gotta set an example that it's gonna be me and my team. Well, who's his team? The apostles, the disciples that would learn how to carry the gospel when Jesus went to heaven. You know, one of my favorite shows growing up was called Supernatural. Yeah. Uh, you have two brothers, you know, Dean and Sam Winchester. And what is their job? To fight monsters. What is our job? To fight demons. We can't see them, but we can see them controlling people. Man, you ever see someone that's on drugs? They're like, they're like totally wasted. You're like, demon possession. It's sad. It breaks my heart. Because that's who I used to be. I used to be truly demon possessed. Drugs and alcohol was my that was my poison. And then when you see someone like that, it's just like it breaks your heart. Yeah. And I pray for those people. I don't judge them. I'm like, dude, man, no. They need Jesus more than anybody. Yeah. It's not the healthy they need a doctor, it's the sick. Yeah. 
We got to be those who keep our eyes open, but our mouth open as well to reach out to the sick and bring them in to the true doctor, which is Jesus. But, but what I love about Supernatural, there was a quote, you know, there's what the Winchesters live by. The quote was, saving people, hunting things, the family business. And that's why I love being here. This is truly a family that has a purpose going out there, bringing people in, and teach them how to actually fall in love with God. But can you bring somebody in if you aren't committed to the team? No. What do you do? You're a lone wolf. Jesus wasn't even a lone wolf. The only time he was a lone wolf was when all his disciples left him. And he died on the cross. Are you dying on the cross anytime soon? I didn't think so. Luke 9, look at his team. Verse 1. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. So wait a minute. Well, what did we just learn about demon possession? It's just sin. It's just sin captivating people. God used his disciples to be able to cast those sins out of people. And they'd be upright and they could see the right way. See, people are surprised when someone changes. Oh, it's a miracle. Yeah, a miracle of God. Because you couldn't change on your own. But it was through the God's word that opened your eyes. So you can actually speak the very word of God. Were you actually speaking the words of God before you studied the Bible? No. Now we speak in some other language. Did you actually see the way Jesus saw before you studied the Bible? No, he opened your eyes. God's word is living and active. It's powerful it's compared to a double-edged sword. It's meant to cut out those sins, those demons. They'll flee when you get into this. Yeah. See, when you're struggling, just get in the word of God. Yeah. This thing will keep him safe. Yeah. That's why it's called the word of God. Mm-hmm. But right here, you see Jesus calls 12 his dream team. And if you go to Luke 10, he gets up getting 70 more. And eventually he has 120 just like him. Amen. And they go and evangelize the world. What do we need now in the 21st century to imitate this? That we all answer the dream, learn, you know what, I want to use a double-edged sword to go help more and more people. See, these men were picked to join God's army, and the result was they were able to drive out all demons. This is truly the result of a true Christian. Less demonic activity. But the thing is, you're probably wondering, well, how do I join God's army? Well, let's go to Luke 9. Drop down. He gives us he gives exactly what we need. We gotta understand what is the cost to joining God's team. Luke 9, verse 57. It says, As they're walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. This guy's fired up to fight demons, huh? He wants to join his team. But what does Jesus say to him? He says, Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, you follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow looks back, is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. This is the cost of joining God's side. Jesus was the master recruiter. He finds people that are enthusiasts. Like, oh yeah, I will follow Jesus. He's walking on water. He's doing all this cool thing. Yeah, I'll be on his team. But then he says, hey, this is the terms. These are the conditions. These are the requirements. See, when it comes to faith in God, we like to think that God loves his unconditional. It's true. But to follow Jesus is absolutely conditional. Yeah. Yeah. He gives us three conditions right here. The first guy is like, dude, he probably he didn't even say anything to what Jesus said. He says, I don't even have a place to lay my head. What does that mean? Is it going to be chaos? Is it going to be comfortable? No. How, how many of us love our comfort? We love our comfortable bed. We love you know, sleeping in. You're like, oh. Jesus had no place to lay his head. You want to follow me? It's going to be chaos. Do you have the guts to follow me? If you don't, there's a door. Jesus wasn't afraid to say, eh, beat it. No, no, no. I know what you're, I know what you're thinking right now. I know what you're feeling. Get out of here. He's sifting the room. Who's really wanting to follow me? It takes conviction. But then he keeps looking. He's like, hey, you come follow me. But my dad died. Oh, 
it's okay, you know, go back, you know. He didn't say that. He says, let the dead bear their own dead. I know Maine was like, ooh, Jesus is harsh right here. But you got to dig a little bit deeper. What was the meaning behind this guy? His heart wasn't in the right spot. See, a a physical dead person can't bury a physical dead person, right? Let the spiritually dead bury the physical dead. He says, dude, you're not, you don't understand. This, this world is lost. There's people that are harassed and helpless. They're controlled by demons. Yeah. And you want to take time to go do something just to, so you can collect an inheritance? How dare you be in my presence right now? Wow. You're not seeing what I see. Wow. You don't have a heart like me. Wow. Wake up. The only hope you have is going to proclaim the kingdom of God. Because yeah. that's the only place you're going to find safety, yeah. peace. Hope, love, family. Yeah, but if you don't go, they'll never know. Right. They'll be stuck in darkness. Yeah. And then finally, you got the third guy who's like a noodle. Oh. Yeah, Jesus, I'll follow you, but let me go back and say goodbye to my mommy. They pay for school. If I follow you, they're not going to pay for school anymore. Oh. Did you hear yourself? Wow. Jesus wasn't that extreme. He died on a cross. Yeah. The only way to heaven is you die on a cross as well. There's no, like, false teaching where Jesus did all in the work. Yes, he conquered sin on the cross. But he says, come follow me. Yeah. Well, where do you go? He died on the cross. Our job as Christians is for people to see the death and the resurrection in our lives. Yes, sir. But if you're living for the world, then we're going to see Jesus' death. See, when you deny yourself, when you decide, you know, I'm not going to go to that party. I'm not going to look at the double look. I'm not going to look at this thing. I'm not going to do that. People can see, like, whoa, yeah. there's something yeah. different. Yep. Yeah. Like, Latrell looks different right now. Yeah. I guarantee you, to be a Christian on a sports team is the hardest thing. Because yeah. if a lot of players aren't Christians, what do you think they're going to do? Party. And if you're not strong in your faith, you're going to be contaminated. Yeah. But Latrell can bring hope. Yeah. This San Jose stinks. But what is the cost? You gotta be willing to drop your comfort, yeah. your sentimentality, yeah. your fear of people. Yeah. You really care what people think of you right now? Mm. Like I used to be so afraid of public speaking, mm. but I'm like I realize you guys ain't thinking about me. You think about yourself. Oh. Like what? How how can I internalize this lesson right now? Am I demon possessed? Am I on God's team? Mm. I don't think I am. I don't know the Bible. Okay, humble yourself. Get with the person next to you because I know they know the Bible. Yeah. You came to a, a revolutionary of God's word. Those who are part of the Thrive Campus Ministry knows how to use this thing. Yeah. You should feel a home right now. It's like, whoa, I can actually learn something. We go to school to learn something that we're going to forget in within two years. Talk about it, bro. Talk about it. This thing will last forever. And you have per- God has put people in your life to teach it to you. But if you lack the humility... You're never going to see the truth. You're going to be demon-possessed for the rest of your life and bring many people with you. And you're, here's the thing. You're going to feel empty, though. There's going to be that itch you can't scratch. You're like, why do I still feel so empty? I'm a Christian, though. Are you really? You can tell a tree by its fruit. Jesus made disciples. See, he didn't say, stop sinning. No, he said, start doing yeah. Start doing Christianity. That's the religious world. Let's go to church. Say, Jesus, Lord, you're good. But you're not going after the purpose Jesus set before you. You're just like these guys. They walked away. Sincerity will not get you into heaven. I was sincere about you. God, don't you remember when I woke up and I prayed that one prayer? Remember when I did the altar call for the eighth time? Remember when I was baptized like five times? Faith and deeds. Faith alone will not get you into heaven either. Because you know who else? You know, you know who else also believes in Jesus, right? Demons do, and they shudder. Some of us conf- professing Christians do not even fear God. Because you're right. Because those demons that do shudder, <laughs> they're laughing at you. Like, dude, I got it. They think that's the real truth. Oh God! Wow. You should be like offended right now at this lesson. It's like, dude, I don't want to be ignorant anymore because yeah. Yeah. that's a threat of Christianity we just don't know yeah. like if you really knew the Bible 
then you should be living out the Bible because it's on every page. Yeah. Every time you don't obey the Bible, that's when problems come. Because God wants to get your attention and put you back on the right track. He wants you to live a life of purpose. If you keep reading in Luke 10, it shows that Jesus calls 70 people, and they're so fired up. You know, they're going out, and it says, they come back to Jesus and say, the demons of you submit to us. But Jesus like, that's cool. But don't rejoice that the demons submit to you. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Ooh. See, yes, we have purpose, but the greatest purpose is loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. What's the real reason to join? It's to help rescue the souls of mankind. Yeah. It's a fight that many, not many want to join, but you have no choice. Either you're on Team Jesus or Team Satan. You can either be used by God or be used by a demon. One brings peace and the other brings anxiety. This is more rare than the fight for your life. It's for your very soul and those you love. See, when I said, Jesus, Lord, I knew I didn't deserve this. I knew I didn't deserve to be in the light. I didn't deserve to have a relationship with God. I didn't deserve to have the kingdom. I thought about all the people I loved. All my religious friends and family that didn't know this. That professed Christianity, but there was no result of what the Bible says. And I'm like, if not me, if not me then who? If not now, then when? I answered that call on August 25th, 2013. I said, Jesus, Lord, I'm after. And I persevered. And this Sunday, Lord willing, my mom's going to get back. It only took almost 11 years, but I persevered. And let me tell you the truth. I've seen it. Demon possession. Demonic activity. Ask my wife. She was driving to a Bible study with my mom. Gets in a crash. You think that was a coincidence? No. Satan was like, no! My mom's almost 60. And now she can come into the kingdom and find peace. Rest for her soul. But what if I would have quit five years in this? Who knows what my life would look like? I knew I wanted to be married to my beautiful wife and have my beautiful baby boy back there with Asia. I want to have this life. When things are hard, you get harder. You trust God harder. You run to God faster. When the trials are here, you're like, oh, this is a good sign. Something great is about to happen. I'm witnessing all the chaos that's happened in the last few weeks. Because why? My mom is so close. But if I just, if I just like, quit, what hope does she really have? Come on, bro. Watch your life and your doctrine very very closely. On, Persevere. Wow. Because if you do, yeah. you'll save yourself and all your hearers. And if you're here tonight and you're learning and you're hearing the word of God for the very first time, you've heard it before, but you've never done it. Good. God's called you. Mm. He's called you to do this. Yeah. He's called you to be a savior of many nations. Yeah. To imitate your Lord. He set the example for you to follow. Don't run from it. Don't be afraid. Is that like on every page? Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Because you're afraid because you don't feel like God's with you. God's always faithful. It's never about God's faithfulness towards us. It's always about our faithfulness towards God. It's time for you to make a decision to enlist into God's army and fight back against the demonic forces of evil out there. And tonight, it's so awesome because the San Jose women have been fighting so hard. And they found a woman that wants to get right with God. She wants to fight back. She wants to listen to God's army. And that's Gabby getting baptized. In closing, let's go to Ephesians 6. We'll close right here. I'll end with this scripture. We are in a battle. And our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against Satan himself and his army and the dominion of darkness. I encourage you with the scripture in Ephesians 6, verse 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles, not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realms. Guys, you're all called 
to win the battle against demons. And that, and we got my white book.